Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of FTR for the Republic. Uh, this is your boy KD. I'm here with Lewis. Uh, make sure you guys check up uh, on our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash for the number four, the Republic. We're also on YouTube, uh, Deezer, Spotify, yeah, even Spotify too. Uh, so, there's a lot of topics that we want to talk about, especially what's been happening last week. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, Nashville shooting uh, that occurred at a private Christian school. Uh, the shooter was identified as Audrey E. Hale, I think E is Elizabeth, a uh, 28-year-old, uh, identified as trans. Uh, the victims were three children, three staff members at Nashville School on Monday. I uh, just want to get your thoughts on on the whole situation here. Yeah, it's a uh, very tragic situation. Um, I think what's most noteworthy or newsworthy is the fallout. I mean, it's unfortunate what happened. Three children. Uh, the body cam footage showed us exactly how it went down. I, I thought it was very, it was very interesting to see how it unfolds. I think a lot of people don't see how it unfolds, mostly because most people ordinarily don't 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 serve in the military. Don't know they're not police officers, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't see how things like this are carried out. But thankfully, we had a a, a police chief that looks like he does a, does a good job, and also police members on staff. And Rex, the the uh, Rex Engelberg, uh, the other one that went that you know that the two that we had the footage of did a great job, and it was a very, I would say, interesting. But for some people, it was also very scarring. You know, I looked at that video. I mean, at one point you saw a dead body on the floor. I had someone say that it was a nine-year-old kid. I thought it was a staff member. Uh, it was um, it's also that interesting. You know, you you know where the shooter is. Right. But you just see them go through every room, and you're you're kind of sitting there and saying, "Oh my God, they're on the second floor! They're on the second floor!" Kind of imagining that you know, if if they had known or if they had been there earlier, would they have saved the life or not? You know, that doesn't that doesn't matter at this point. Mm -hmm. I think what matters now is <clears throat> the press has pretty much moved on. You don't hear anybody talking about the one nine year old girl who sacrificed herself by pull to pull a fire alarm. And got sh and got executed. Yeah, that was by sad. this transgendered uh, individual by right. the mass shooter. Really, um, you don't talk about the staff members. Uh, you don't talk about the. There was a black janitor custodian. You don't talk about the one of the one of the victims was uh, what is it, the priest the head priest's daughter. There's also no mention of the manifesto that was left behind. That's going to be a big debate coming up. The police are saying that they're analyzing it. They're going to release it soon. There's already two groups pretty much being pitted. There's already division. Everything now is divided in this country. And so there's already division. Um, there are two groups. One led by the GOP. Uh, and most people, I assume, they want to see the manifesto. They want to see what led this individual to do that. Uh, one side saying it's a hate crime. The other saying we have to wait. I'm kind of in between. Uh, like I told you earlier, I don't want to make a conclusion that it's a hate crime. Because what if it's saying, oh, I'm attacking the... I was, only, I was only looking for the headmaster of the school or the priest, whatever. Maybe there was a trauma there by somebody. That wouldn't be a hate crime. It just happens to be that that they were Christian and it was at the school. But then in the manifesto might say that, might say other things, which is what LGBTQ groups are worried about. A lot of them don't want them to release the, uh, the manifesto, mainly because they claim that they're going to be under attack despite someone from their group shooting up a school. And executing three nine-year-olds and three staff members who had we were pretty much innocent until we know anything. And regardless of what you think about Christians, they don't deserve to be shot up by school. Regardless of what you think about white people, they don't de they don't deserve to be shot up in schools. Um, but there are groups in this country that don't care. It's... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you saw that the uh, press secretary for the current governor, Katie Hobbs, mm -hmm. what she posted. She had a tweet. Pretty. It was a meme, pretty much, that she posted with a caption. It was pretty much someone with two, with two pistols, I think, shooting. And the caption was, us, when we see trans hate, pretty much. That's kind of the that's kind of the gist of the tweet. I didn't see that. Wow, that's... that's wow. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. It it's is. Ridiculous. Um, she quit. She resigned, pretty much. And rightfully so. That's a disgusting thing to say. 
but it kind of shows this um but the media the but there are people in the media pretty much, and there's people out there pretty much saying well they deserved it you know they were all oh, they were christian they were white oh they, they had this coming because they assume that just because they're christian and white that there's this trans hatred in there there's no i don't i don't see i, I don't see this this trans hate i feel like it's all it's all created it's all invented it's all made up to to further this agenda that we're victimized that we're that we there's we have to grieve that we're victims that we've been attacked that we're constantly put on the ground that we're that we can't move upwards that we can't climb the social ladder because we're trans and it's because white christians in, in particular hate us and are preventing us from doing that but i don't see that i don't see that i mean the president pretty much said this week instead of mourning the fact that there was three nine-year-olds and three adults executed at a school what did he say when the press informed him he said oh uh what did uh, oh he was asked at a press conference about what senator hawley said he said that this was a hate crime as soon as he was asked a question uh, he was asked do you think that is a hate crime because senator hawley thinks so and he pretty biden pretty much said oh if he says it, it's not then and then he said oh i'm just joking yeah, I, th- I think before, yeah, I said, think it was a left it off as well. Yeah, he just laughed it off. Remember, he went joking. down there and he said, "Oh, I'm only down here for the ice cream." Sir, there's just been a mass shooting. Yeah, it's it's yeah, that's that's pretty disgusting. And on top of that, I, I believe the next day he decided to add a uh, Trans Day visibility. Trans Day visibility. Uh, yeah, exactly. the day after the shooting, which makes no sense. And 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 on top of that, when you look at uh, other people's tweets they're more worried about the the trans pro- pronouns rather than who died in the uh, in the uh, in the shooting they were more worried about the pronouns because people were saying that it's a it's a biological uh, female but they don't discuss who died in there if we had to pray for them pray for them it's more about oh you guys are misgendering this person. How dare you? It's it's so vile. It's so disgusting. And then when you look at the media, they don't even mention if uh, if it's a a biological woman or if it's trans. It's just a simple twenty eight year old Audrey Hill. That's pretty much it. So like, what do you what do you is is that is that even noticeable? Did you expect that happening from the media? Uh, did I expect the media not to discuss it? Yeah. I think I, well, what do we expect? I mean, it's kind of predictable. There's there's about like three themes predictable when there's, a, every time there's a mass shooting. It's one, what Joe Biden pretty much said. He kind of just said that guns were the cause of, of mass deaths. That, oh, the reason there's these mass shootings is because of the guns. He pretty much wants to define, he and his party want to define they, they want to ban assault rifles, yet can't define it. I, I, I was watching uh, this week, uh, a bunch of cabinet secretaries were testifying uh, to a bunch of different committees, in particular appropriations, because it's time for the budget, so they have to go there and pretty much tell them, we're going to use the money you give us for this. And, I, and uh, the Homeland Secretary, Mayorkas, who seems to think that he's doing something at the border, but isn't actually doing anything at all. Uh, I, I saw uh, there was an exchange between Senator Kennedy from Louisiana, pretty much asking him on two days. There was two days of, of testimony. I pretty much said, "What is an assault uh, rifle?" Because you want to ban it. So, what is an assault? What is an, what? It, what defines an assault rifle? And he said, "Oh, well, it's an AK-47." Uh, but but I don't know. I don't have that exact definition for you right now. I'd have to get it later. Or it's the definition that's used in courts. He doesn't know what it is. He's pretty much saying, I don't know what it is. He doesn't want to say that he doesn't know, but he doesn't know. Right. And it's this level of ignorance. They don't know. It's expected, though. They don't know anything. They don't know anything. Right. And then the second theme is, the second theme is that there's no, there's no purpose served in releasing the manifesto. There's no, there's no reason. I think probably because, and I mentioned it before, these transgender groups think that it would hurt their movement it would hurt their movement it would hurt them pushing the transgenderism towards being accepted in all circles it's accepted in schools it's accepted in sports it's accepted at home 
if your son who's 10 wants to become a woman that's fine you have to accept that that's love and that's no but if you don't want to do that then you're a bigoted human being and if you die in a mass shooting that's you deserve that because that's violent yeah i was Um, i was gonna ask uh real quick why do you think they're so fixated uh, and... That's the third theme. That's the third theme. That's the one that you were mentioning. I think I, I can tie those two together. It's there's a media class now that doesn't report on news. It doesn't report. It just projects its ideological beliefs to America, not as that you should consider this. No, you have to accept this. This is the way it is. If we're if let's just say if if it takes a mass shooting to make you accept transgender rights should not be infringed that you have to accept them because the price of not accepting them will be this you have to accept it Mm -hmm. that oh it's sad that there was a murder but you have to understand that because of america's history of of its christian conservative history and its intolerance on transgendered uh, transgendered people that's what happens you have to understand that's what happens they Uh... can't they can only take it for so long but this person isn't even transgender. I mean, they're, they're, people like this Aiden Aubrey Aubrey uh, Hale, is it? Aubrey Hale? Yeah. She went by Aiden, apparently, as a, as a boy. As she a, a boy. Woman, Aiden? A boy. Aiden. That was her male name. That's what she went as. Now that she was a boy in her mind. But we've had people like this forever. We've had people like this since ancient times, since ancient Greece, ancient Rome. They were called transvestites. People who, who were men, who thought they were women, dressed up like women, but they never had the surgery. These aren't transgender people. These are just transvestites. They aren't people with two different genders. You understand what I'm trying to say? This isn't a, a new thing. This isn't real. It's you think you're a woman, so you dress like a woman and you're now a woman. But you're not. You're just a transvestite. You're still a guy. Wait, so they did they change the definition? So instead of... They have. Because now people nowadays will say anybody who, who thinks they're a different gender is transgender. There's nothing. They're already used to hear that term called metrosexual or a cross dresser. Yes, that's what it is. If you don't have the surgery and you're a guy who thinks she's dressing up like a woman, you're just a cross dresser, really. You're a transvestite. You're not transgender. But all of those terms have disappeared. Now it's you're a transgender and you now have to be afforded the rights of everyone else. So you haven't had the surgery, but you're a woman. If you're a man who committed rape or a brutal assault and you go to a jail and you're going to go to jail. And you identify as a woman on last second, you now have to be sent to a woman's jail because you're not transvest you're not transvestite. You're not a metrosexual. You're not a crossdresser. You're transgendered. You're a woman now. Despite just identifying. You don't even have to you don't oh, I I'm I'm a woman. That's okay. literally that's as easy as it is. Oh, I'm a woman now. So I, I identify as a woman. So you're telling me if a big buff dude come passes by me, would just walk in the sidewalk, just passes by me with a dress on, a fake wig, eyelashes, lipstick, and that person is identified as transgen- transgender but not transvestite. Well, look at what happened in uh, look at what happened in Canada. The professor, uh, the teacher, the woodshop teacher, who was a man for most of her life, for most of his life, what did he do? He bought <laughs> fake breast implants right. that are huge. He put on a shirt. He has a blonde wig, and he just walks around, and he's a woman now. And the school district has pretty much said, well, if you don't like it, that means that you're a bigot and you're, and you're a, a, a transphobe. And the parents have no choice but to let their children go to that school. And they have to take that class. And they can't do anything about it. Because in Canada, there's a law that says if you're anti-trans, that's hate speech. And you can be sent to jail. So what's the other option you have? Well, I can keep my kids in public school or I have to take them to a private school. But look what happened now in this country. There's a private Christian school... That was just attacked by a transgender person. Now, we won't know because the manifesto, I'm sure this week, if there's more talks about the manifesto getting released, they won't be letting that manifesto get released. They won't let it get released. That's what I feel. If I, That's what I expect. If there's, if all these groups, I mean, look at what happened this week, this week, almost this weekend. Despite a shooting by a transgendered person outside the White House, there was an event called the Trans Day of Vengeance. It was a protest outside the Supreme Court. When did that happen? This week. This week. Interesting. And a trans advocacy group didn't cancel it, despite it happening. This was planned before the shooting, by the way. They, were, they knew they were going to do this, 
if they had the title of the day, it was going to be called Trans Day of Vengeance. Regardless of anything, the sky could be falling, the world could be ending, there could be 12 mass shootings at Christian schools, all the little girls in America could die. They still held this match, this protest called Trans Day of Vengeance. Was which, it? which has a, obviously it has a violent connotation. It's we will we are going to get revenge at a <laughs> fierce, harsh, violent level. It's the day of vengeance. Trans people are going to go out there and get their revenge. On who? Who are you getting revenge on? Tell me. Yeah, exactly. Who? It's it. Well, it's obvious. It's white Christians in America because they don't like America. They don't like this country. They view this country as wicked. They view this country as despicable. They don't like the white people in this country. They view them as racists, as homophobes, as transphobes. They view them as everything that's wrong in this country, despite them building this country. Mm. I, believe, uh, I believe Kentucky also passed uh, the same thing, uh, I think a day ago. Passes restrictions on trans youth. And uh, it, Kentucky did the same thing as well, I believe. Yeah. But, it, it's this whole theme that we're seeing. Um, it, it, the, this movement, for a while now, has taken on this this Marxist, Marxist-Leninist approach of any means necessary. It used to be a, a an anthem that people that the universities you would see the university activists pro, uh, saying back in like the seventies and eighties, sixties, whenever they wanted to get things, you know, like the abortion rights, any means necessary. Any means necessary means no matter how many. No, ma- there was a school shoot. It's pretty much the theme. It's the theme. There was a school shooting. No matter what, no means necessary, no matter what, it doesn't matter if there's a school shooting. It doesn't matter if we have to shoot up a school and we're not going to release the manifesto and three little girls have to die. No means necessary. We're going to get our the rights that we feel we've been denied. Not that we've been denied, what we feel we've been denied, which is equal, mass equality, whatever they feel. No matter, you know, the Supreme. The, remember when uh, Senator Schumer went outside the, was on the steps of the Supreme Court, and said, "Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, you've wrote, you've, uh, you, what is that? You've seen, you, uh, pretty much threatening them that you'll see, you know, you'll get what's coming to you." And what did you see a couple years later? Uh, just was it last year? You had a transgendered, pretty much an assassin. He was planning to ki- assassinate. Uh, the Justice Kavanaugh outside of inside of his home. Oh yeah, I heard that. Yeah. And what was the only reason that he stopped is because his sister said no. That transgendered man's sister said no. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Right. He said, uh, "You'll you'll sow the you'll release the whirlwind and you'll pay the price." That's what he said. There. And, and and you'll never and you won't know what hit you. Well, what does that mean? And then remember when uh, uh, she was on the View, this, the the actress Jane Fonda. I don't know if you know who she said. She pretty much said that, you know, she pretty much said that she was boasting that women weren't going to retreat on abortion rights and that, that you know, if it wasn't enough, if protesting and marching for it wasn't enough, she said, she smirked and she said, oh, well, I've thought of murder. Well, who is she going to murder? Murder who? Oh, yeah, she just Pro-life said, uh, people? Yeah. That's pretty much it. It's, it's violence. It's no means necessary. We've protested. We're going to march. We're going to protest. No means necessary, no matter what the cost. If we have to murder pro-life groups, people in pro-life groups or who identify as Catholic or as Christian, and they happen to be white as well, it doesn't matter. We ha- we're going to get those rights. Did, did she get in trouble? Uh, no, by of course she didn't get in trouble. She's on The View. She got applause. She got applause. There's no, there's no pushback. There's, there's nothing in the media outside of Fox News. There's no one in the media who's going to push back and say, well, that, that, what, don't you think that they're... That those people also have the right to express themselves. You don't think things there. You don't think there's freedom of speech. No, it's no means necessary. It's it's remember 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 2020 the summer. I mean, remember in our town in New Jersey, they had there was a there was a there was a protest. There was a protest for Black Lives Matter, and there were rumors that there was going to be violence, that they were going to loot stores. I remember seeing a couple business owners on the on the on on Somerset Street mm-hmm. pretty much pretty much boarding up their doors they, they had wooden boards on their on their buildings and on them it said you know black Lives, and they had to paint it they had to write black lives matter on it so that maybe hopefully so hopefully hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they don't it, destroy their the yeah store. hopefully if someone read it who had some sort of, sort of sanity would have read it and said oh black lives matter they like me but imagine that imagine saying 
they like me, so I'm not going to attack them. And this is supposed to be a country with equal justice. That's why you see con that's why you see these polls every other year. They have polls. Wall Street Journal just had a poll saying that patriotism is down substantially since the last time they took it in the 90s that's why it's it's no matter what all of these remember all the actors like george johnny depp and kathy griffin and george lopez and rosie o'donnell what did they say oh you know the some of them said oh i dream of of killing donald trump remember kathy griffin had the took that selfie of her with donald trump's head yeah and uh who said that uh i think it was madonna or, or Katy perry who said oh you know um I've dreamt of bombing the White House. Johnny Depp said, oh, when's the last time we've had a... What's the last time an actor assassinated a sitting president? Making reference to uh, Lincoln being assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, an mm. actor. Who are these all targeted to? Are these targeted to... Are they targeting Democrats? I don't see, any, I don't see anybody on the, le on the right saying, we're going to kill Joe Biden. When's... when's uh, When's uh, any when when are these actors gonna when are any of these uh, Republican actors if there's any of them saying oh you know yeah when's you know when's the last time an actor uh, assassinated a sitting president making referencing to, uh, uh, Joe Biden when's the last time you saw a conservative uh, actor or comedian pretty much go and say oh hey uh, uh, I'm going to assassinate what's his name. Um, he, or you know he has a photo of, he, he tweets out a photo with Joe Biden's head bloodied head on on a you know holding it by the hair there's no one there's no one doing that no one's doing that none none whatsoever none whatsoever so for the left what are they doing their ideology no means necessary no means necessary it doesn't matter what we do it exempts political violence because it means yeah we've protested we've done everything we can we feel we can because we have a grievance towards the country that has to be corrected no matter what we're going to do anything no matter a school shooting if we have to have a school shooting to justify that there are that there's people in trans america that feel like they're attacked and victimized every single day so be it three little girls can die so be it if we need to go to the steps of the supreme court and and, and threaten supreme court justices and then see people see people outside their home protesting it wasn't just that there was an assassin Remember, there were several days that they were protesting outside the homes of Gorsuch and, and Barrett and Kavanaugh mm -hmm. and, and Justice Roberts and Alito. Remember, they were pro there were groups protesting. There were mobs. What did the Justice Department do? Merrick Garland didn't do anything. He said, oh, no, no. oh, we don't accept it. He goes to the Senate and he says, oh, we don't accept that. But when he's asked if they're prosecuting, he doesn't say that we doesn't say a word. He says, oh, no, oh, we, we, we can't. That's an ongoing, this ongoing. We can't talk about it. But you see, behind the behind the scenes, he's pretty much no one's been no one's been charged. Yet January sixth happened, a protest where nobody was armed. We realize that, realize that the group that has been attacked for being armed or being uh, an advocate of arm of weapons, being blamed every time there's a mass shooting. Remember the last time there was a mass shooting. Remember the one in at Atlanta, where there was a, an attack at a church. Or remember the the the, guy, the gay nightclub in Orlando a couple years ago. I remember. What was the first thing that they said? Oh, it's guns, and Republicans they need to shape up, or if not, because they have blood in their hands, and they have to do, and they have to get rid of guns. They do they have the balls to get rid of guns, or are they going to keep getting lectured by their NRA lobby, which by the way doesn't have any money? Have, do you even hear the NRA these days? No, they're bankrupt. They have no money. There's nothing for them. What are they lobby? Yeah, they lobby rhetorically. But it's not because they're getting lobbied. These politicians and they were on the right realize that there's a Second Amendment that you cannot infringe. Many of them are gun owners. Many of them are do go to shooting ranges. So it's not a matter of, of political expediency. It's a, it's a matter of principle why they don't attack the Second Amendment until someone pays them enough money to do so. Probably. It's it's really sad that a lot of people get the data wrong about guns, guns itself. Uh, but it's also sad that. Uh, not, not a lot of people relearn history. I mean, like when you look at Hitler and Stalin and and Mao, they they took all the guns. But then, if you like, if you want to talk about gun control, you got Chicago. You got places like Chicago, and then you got places like New York who have the strictest gun laws, yet still manage to have more crimes, more shootings. 
But, no, they uh, ignore that. They ignore that because again, it's all it's no means necessary. There, there's nothing. If you mention that, they, they'll ignore you. They'll say, "Oh, remember when you see people mentioning out? Oh, but what about black on black crime? What do they say? Are you racist? Yeah. Are they, you really they, trying they will, to they will ignore bring their race label the on mass you. amounts of police brutality that there is? Don't you see the white on black crime? But what about black on black crime? What about black on Asian crime? What about black black on Hispanic crime? How many times have we seen? Incidents in New York City, Asian women being pushed into the subway. In Seattle, Asians and white white women being attacked, mugged, raped, etc. by people. They don't release those mugshots unless they're white. But we all know it's, they're not white. They turn out to be black. You know, look at all these apartment buildings in the Bronx and in Brooklyn where there's these predators outside waiting, waiting for a woman to come home, walk up the, up the stairs or the elevator, and they're waiting for her to, as soon as she's opening that door, they rush towards her and they try to get in. I mean, check out the news. Check out the news. You'll see uh, occasionally these women saying there was this guy chasing, running towards me mm-hmm. right. in the middle of the night. I live alone. I live alone with my son or my daughter. There was no, or there was no one home at the time. Right. I could have been raped. I could have been killed. And these people usually, and the people that are doing that, they usually have these long rap sheets, but and they because of no cash bail and because of these DAs, they don't get, they don't go to jail. And if they go to jail, they're out on early, early release. And that's a pro- that's another problem we have in this country: crime. But that's a, that's that's another topic for another day. For but, sure. But for now, it's it's this whole. Uh, I, I've mentioned it before. It's almost like we've set up a protected class of people that can do no wrong, because they have they have announced to us that they have a grievance towards the country. They feel that they have been victimized throughout history, throughout American history, by a conservative, white, religious, Christian, Catholic class, and that they're now going to rebel, and they're going to demand, and they're going to achieve full autonomy and full equality against the law, regardless of having it already, regardless if they actually have it already in the, in the law or not. Because they want power. At the end of the day, it's about power. They want power. And now they have power. I mean, they have an activist media. Media, they don't discuss. They're not journalists. They're just activists. They're just projecting to you what they believe in, what you ought to believe in. You want the manifesto? What are you, transphobic? Why do you want the manifesto? You're transphobic. That's That must be why. Don't you realize that there have been trans people attacked in America? That's why they had that trans day of, a trans day of vengeance. Imagine that. What, what's the kind con- people don't realize the connotations of that? They don't realize it. Or maybe they do. I, I feel like I feel like most Americans, they don't, they see it through that facade and they say, that's horrible. That's horrible. How, I mean, little girls die, children die. Imagine your child dying in a school and all of a sudden you're being told that, oh, you know what? They, they deserved it. Oh, I'll be furious. They had it coming to them. They're Christian. How dare they go to a Christian school that bans drag queens? And how dare they pray the rosary? And how dare they sing hymns or pray during the day? How dare they believe in Jesus Christ? How dare they? They deserved it. That's pretty much what you hear the media saying. Oh, it's fine. Oh, that happened. No, it's tragic. But don't remember. Don't forget. Don't forget that trans people, trans lives matter. What did Biden say? He said trans people are the soul of America. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, yeah, I wonder how our future is going to look. If they're going to keep uh, pushing this. Um, Before we get into a different topic about uh, American values, I do want to take a quick break if you don't mind lewis all right hey what's up guys it's katie here uh before we get into the uh, second part of our segment uh, i just want to let you guys know that i'm also running a gaming channel um i'm gonna put the link down the uh, description down below so if you guys aren't like you know into the whole mood of politics you can always enjoy the whole part of the gaming uh world you know uh, i i I usually tend to do a little bit more comedy into the no no walkthroughs of gameplays. Um maybe in the future I'll do that. But if you guys are down, um if you guys are a huge fan of gaming, uh, just go down the uh, description below, uh hit the link button, and you guys can check out my gaming channel. Uh thank you guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our episode FTR for the Republic. Uh this is your boy KD. Uh Still here with Lewis. Uh, Lewis, I wanted to talk to you about um, 
American values. I pull up a chart from Wall Street Journal. This is a data from 1998. This is about uh, the supporting on patriotism and religion. So in 1998, for patriotism, 70% of people voted for patriotism. They supported patriotism in 1998. The numbers right now in 2023 is 38%. Now, when you look at religion, religion in 1998 is 62%. But in 2023, it's 39% of religion that people support, that thinks that it, it is important. What what happened from 1998 till now? What happened to the American value? Why do, why do you think that people don't really... Yeah, I, uh, I read the Wall Street Journal you're mentioning. It's a Wall Street Journal. It came out... Uh the 27th of March uh, yeah this is a, this was conducted by the University of Chicago uh, no, it's, a, it's a nonpartisan research group called NORC at the University of Chicago they do polls like this pretty much every 10 or 20 years um, they posted it's, it's a very interesting um, they, they posted some reasons they wrote some reasons in this article as to why um, you can imagine um, things like Donald they blame things like well Donald Trump the rise of Donald Trump has led to a downturn in patriotism uh, the housing crisis. This hasn't been the last twenty years. They they haven't been great for the country. Or let's just say after nine eleven, it hasn't been great. Uh, people have less and less confidence in their government. They have less and less confidence in the people running the country. They have less and less confidence if whether we can achieve anything. Well, tell me, when's the last time we've accomplished something? People don't believe in the vaccine. People don't trust the vaccine. I'm certainly. I mean, both of us have been skeptic about it, about whether it's been properly done, whether it's reliable, despite being vaccinated at this point. And so, do you, so, so do you think, uh, what, what question, so do you think this is being pushed by the government, or is this uh, us as no. Americans, we just don't talk a lot about it? Well, both both, both can be true. Uh, you mean push, when you, mean, when you say push by the government, you mean... Meaning, 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 like um, they want to push something else, like like rights. I think we, I think we've been focusing on rights more than responsibilities and and all that. Um, push by meaning. Actually, no, that, that's a good question. Uh, I think when you say push, I think you're meaning is the government doing things that would lead to less people feeling confident or patriotic about their country. And the answer is yes. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, look at the fallout. We can start at line 11. Like I said, look at the fallout. We were told that we went to two wars. And one of those wars was Iraq, which basically now no one believes we should have ever gotten into. They believe that we were... They, the American people, the public believes they were, one, lied to, they were deceived, and that lives lost in Iraq were pointless. We didn't have to go. There are people who assume that maybe if Saddam was still there, things would have not spiraled out of control in the region like they have. The disasters in Afghanistan, the disasters in Syria, in Libya, and other places across, you know, Yemen, South Sudan, you know, the, would, would there be ISIS? Would there be Boko Haram? That's in Africa. Would mm -hmm. there be these other groups? People, people are asking these questions, and they feel that, you know, should I feel proud of a country? Because that's kind of what patriotism broadly means. That I'm proud of this country. That I have this pride that of America. America is the shining. Uh, capital on a hill like Ronald Reagan used to say that there's nothing wrong with this country that this country is moving forward that there's that we should feel pr proud we should feel pride about the future of the, about the present the past and the future of this country I don't think people do I don't think people a lot of people do I mean you're we're, took, we're looking at 70% in 1998 less than 40% I mean it's only roughly over a third of of, of, the, of these people that responded in the poll 38 percent and that's one of the reasons then we had a housing crisis in 2008 where millions of people lost their homes and we saw the big banks get a bailout we saw uh companies like ford gm uh well ford didn't t didn't, uh, didn't take a loan well but mainly chrysler and general motors took loans they took loans from the federal government that looked like bailouts even though gm paid off their loan Right uh, to essentially keep the economy afloat, but the American people didn't receive anything. None of the bankers went to jail. Nobody was punished. The business the next day resumed like normal, but Americans struggled. And then we have a healthcare system that Barack Obama tampered with and doesn't work. Americans don't feel like it works. 
Americans feel like they can't if they don't have health insurance and I mean you certainly know how this feels and if you don't have health insurance and you have a medical problem what do you do people don't know what to do because they realize if I go to the doctor it's going to be thousands of dollars thousands of dollars on top of all the things I have to pay already and if I don't have health insurance I have to pay a fine at the end of the year I mean I remember hearing people talk about the fine for not having Obamacare the penalty that Obama put is pretty much a tax for saying I don't want health insurance because it's way too expensive so I'm going to decline the service I have to pay a fine of I saw people paying fines of 700 a grand even over a thousand dollars just because they declined Obamacare so people see that and they say oh I mean I don't like where we're going. What pride about what? And then Obama receives two wars, starts five, has seven wars under his presidency. And people are saying, look at what we did in Libya. We turned that country into a disaster. There's a modern day slave market in the continent of Africa that no one talks about, but it's there. Things like Benghazi. We look at Syria, the disaster in Syria. We, we seem to be not, we seem to be unable to do anything. Look at uh, what happened when we had that conflict with Iran under Obama, where mm-hmm. we had Marie, uh, uh Navy uh, sailors on, on, on boats, on U.S. Navy ships being bullied by the Iranians, the Iranians. Right. The people aren't going to feel proud about that. They're going to ask questions. Well, what are we doing? Are we still this prideful, powerful nation that, that innovates, that accomplishes things? We, we also have this issue that, that we haven't broached this topic before, but I, I, we've talked about this offhand. Um, what does this country make? What do we make? What tangible, material object do we make? We don't do anything. The modern economy in, the, in America now is either you're on Wall Street or you're in the financial sector making business transactions, doing stocks, bonds, private equity, venture capital, hedge funds. We have hedge funds in, in New York City and we have IT and we have coding and we have social media companies and in and, 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 and these tech companies in Silicon Valley but what do they make what do they make what job is there in Kentucky or in Michigan for people to make things do we make cars in this country not really do we make tires in this country not really do we make anything do we make dishwashers and and refrigerators do we make things Do we actually invent and create produce manufacturer objects that provide daily value that improve people's lives and make it easier for people to live in this country anymore. We don't. We don't. We don't do any of that. And and that just goes along with look at the education standards in this country. We're getting mm. rid we're getting rid of testing. We've right. gotten rid I mean, is the SAT gonna <laughs> exist in ten years? Probably not. I took the GRE uh, about a year ago. Actually no, I took the year uh, GRE about a couple of months ago, the exam to get into a graduate school. There are schools nowadays, programs that don't accept the GRE anymore. Pretty much on the basis of diversity and inclusion. Because statistically speaking, and it's a fact, kids from minority backgrounds like ourselves, and I did well in school, they don't do well on these standardized tests. They don't do well on the SAT or the ACT or the GRE or the GMAT. Are these tests going to be there anymore? And so what's going to happen to the education standards? I mean... Most of the country, I think it's most of the black community has a fifth grade reading level. Or most kids nowadays who graduate. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Level. Where's Where's the pride? What pride should be feel? I mean, when people mention pride, they think of Pride Week. They don't think about pride of this country. Do you see? Look at the military recruiting. It's gone down exponentially. People just don't want to enlist. And it's a and it's a and it's a whole multitude of factors. But this poll. It, it just it, it symbolizes or it, it summarizes it up to say what we've been mentioning all these these various factors military recruiting terrible government policy the history of countless wars overseas and then the rise of china how we look inept to face it the ukraine war where we're just sending billions of dollars across the across the across the ocean to ukraine but the people of east palestine are starving and they don't have water and they don't have a good environment or clean air or clean water or clean anything. Mm-hmm. But we don't focus on that. We don't, we don't, we don't do anything. So of course, patriotism is down. Uh, religion isn't actually surprising to me. If you actually look back before this, religion has been going down. Is it a reason that people feel society nowadays, things aren't that well? Sure. 
I think God is very meaningful in your life. I, I'm religious as in, as in I believe in God and I'm Catholic. Do I go to church every Sunday? No, I don't. My family was very religious, but we don't do that. Um, do I advise people to do it? Sure, do it. I'm not going to force you to. You no, know, I didn't, so why would I force you to do it? But I, I certainly believe that I think faith in a higher being like a God, or whether you're a Christian, Catholic, or Muslim, I think that's meaningful. I think it helps provide order in your life. I hope it provides meaning in your life. I think it helps you. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much noticed that, um, uh, especially with me, because uh, I just got back into believing God and getting into religion again. Uh, you know, with last year was not my year, you know, when it comes to finance and, you know, work and everything else. Um, but a lot, a lot of people like to point out the reason why people go back and believe in God is because of morality's sake. Like, they want to feel like they want to be a good moral person, you know? Do you think that's the case? Well, it's going down. So I think when maybe in, let's say, 10 years, we can see and see if there's a difference and more people joining, uh, if, if people feel these values are important to them, um... I think the one, the other one that's alarming to me is having children. That one has gone down exponentially. Oh, a lot, yes. Yeah, I mean, in 1998, it was around 60%. Now, in 2019 and 2023, it's around 20 30%. 20 30%. There's a breakdown that I like that they did between the political parties. Uh, you know, having children. 26% of Democrats who identify as Democrats in this poll. 26% think having children is very important to them. 20% of independents and 38% of Republicans. I, I was actually shocked that the Republicans won. I thought it would be more. 38%? Yeah, I thought it would be 38%. more. 38%. I thought it would be more just because, you know, we're conservatives, so we listen to a lot of people on the conservative side, and a lot of them talk about having children. That's important. But it doesn't surprise me also. But I, I can see why it, it would be this way. Think of everything we just talked about in the first segment. There's a seemingly this war on children or the war for the soul of children or mm -hmm. for the mind of children you have schools that are essentially indoctrinating your children to be not just to be leftists not just to vote for the democratic party if you're a cynic and you want to feel and go that route but pretty much telling them that you know what you should explore your sexuality at eight years old i mean i saw a video the other day where there was a school board meeting and p parents were protesting because in their children's homework there was a question saying, it was an open-ended paragraph, a prompt saying, tell me, lay out and in fully detail your sexual fantasies. These were for children. Children. Yeah. This That's... isn't a college test where you're studying neuroscience or wherever the hell you would excuse it in college. That's very disgusting. These aren't 20-year-olds. These, aren't 20 year old, 20 year old. these are 10, 11, 12-year-olds. So parents, if people say that and saying, well... Can I have children? Do I want to have a kid in these days? Do I do I want to? And then another one, another factor for that is is uh, and and they use this this factor to explain also the 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 decline in religion, the decline in patriotism, the decline in having children, community involvement. It's individualism. I can remember a time in history, not that I was alive during that time, but I can remember looking back when. When people in America were able to differentiate the individual from the community, but not separate them. The individual makes up a community. Yes, you're an individual. You have your own beliefs. You, you, may, be, you may be an atheist. You may not be an atheist. You may be Christian, and Protestant, or not Catholic, or regardless. Those qualities aren't essential to you. They're incidental. Mm -hmm. They don't make up who you are. Meaning, I could be Hispanic... <clears throat> But just because my last name is Lopez or Valentin or Hernandez or Gomez, that doesn't make me automatically a member of a certain tribe, that I'm a member of the Democratic bloc. I mentioned to you this before, just because we have, if we look at the Italian community who have assimilated and you say, you see a Cuomo or a Giuliani or a, or a Pelosi or any, any of those last names, if I told you those last names, forget the first names, if I told you those last names, do you know who a political group they identify to? No, because these groups have assimilated. They are Italian-Americans on both sides of the aisle. You don't know who is who. Right. 
You don't know. But you do see that with Hispanics. You do see that with African Americans in particular. You do see that with Asians, not so much. But you're starting to see that. It's, 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 you're an individual and you have qualities to yourself. You may be hardworking. You may not be. But the, but your gender in your race, your ethnicity, that's not essential to you. That's, that's an incidental event. You were born that way. You don't control that. That's just a part of who you are. You leave that aside. But the key qualities of, of I, well, I don't have children. I am religious. I am proud of my country. I am a hard worker. I do believe that money is important. Those are individual characteristics. But nowadays, you see individuals, they just say, well, I want to make money and I want to focus on my career. And I don't want to, I don't, I, I'm going to worry about children down the line. That's not important. Oh, religion. That's not, that's not important to me. I want to focus on me. And what do I get? What rights do I have? Again, what you said before, it's more, what rights do I have? What do I get? But I don't want any of the responsibility of having it. Just give me all that I deserve. Give me all that I want. Because people are focused on their cultural and racial backgrounds rather than what we have in common and that's community but before you used to say well yeah you're you're you have all that you're you are these things but people used to come into the community and gather what bothers me a lot about this uh in in community uh, involvement has been down has been going down but that's been going down for a while despite it's very interesting because it was actually going up from 98 to 2019 and ever since 2019 it's been dipping down it was at like what 50 percent in 1998 yeah. And then it went to over 60% in 2019, and now it's back down to close to 20% yeah. in, 20, in, in, in 23. That's insane. And you can you can, you can probably say, well, the reasons for that are the political tension. The country's much more divided. Do people want to really live in their community? Do they want to, you know, if, my, if I'm a Democrat and my neighbor's a Trump voter, do I really want to help him? And you see the same thing on the right sometimes. Sometimes you say, ah, you know, you're a conservative, and I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, there's my yeah, neighbors I've, I've have seen a it. pride flag out. Yeah, and they have that sign that says they're pretty much uh, <laughs> banters about how much they tolerate, and, and you know that no hate sign here. Do I really want to help them? Do I really want to get to know them? Yeah, it's also, yeah. That's that's super sad. I, I've, yeah, it it seems like this. Um, the uprise stopped around 2020, and it dropped horribly down to 2023. Yeah, I I just thought maybe it's because of COVID, you know, when COVID happened, that's when everything just dropped. But it's still going on until twenty twenty three. No, people are still people. People are people. People. There's no. There's no civic. There's no civic nationalism anymore. You see all these people moving out, like states from California, right? New York. There used to be. I remember that. I mean. Maybe because people could, it wasn't that accessible to move anywhere, and the country wasn't as mobile. Maybe that's a reason for it. But people used to stay in the community and say, "No, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna stay here, and we're gonna get this fixed. We need people like that." Instead, you have people leaving states like New York and saying, "Oh no, it's totally unlivable there. I'm just gonna go somewhere else. Forget this. I'm out." People in California, not just right-wing people in California. There's even left-wing people in California who are on the left who are saying. I can't pay a 13% state tax. It's ridiculous. It's a lot. You see the gas prices? Exactly. It's much. The crime is in, I can't live here. It's, it's, and they go to places like Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado, Kentucky, te- Texas. There's no, they don't stay home and they say, you know what? This was messed up. We're going to fix it. Mainly because everyone's blinded by this ideological barrier where they say, no, my set of policies didn't make that. I, I assume there's people who leave California who are on the left and say, oh, no, that's not because of Democrats. This is because of the Republic. It's just it just happened. They don't look back and say, this is the reason why this happened. This is the reason why all these prices are high. Why would the entitlements, the policy, the massive spending, all of that, the massive immigration, all of it, the lack of crime enforcement, all of that. They don't look at all of that. They just say, you know what? It just happened. We just got to go. They don't stay back and say, all of those factors, we're going to look at each each issue. Each issue, and we're going to say, you know what? We have to go back, and we have to we have to reverse ship, we have to reverse course, steer the ship around, and go back to where we were, where we were fine. And we're going to enforce the law. And we're going to prevent people from coming into our state illegally. And we're going to reduce the tax rate so it's affordable. All those things. 
No one does it anymore. People just get up and they leave. And they don't volunteer. And community involvement really means that it's volunteering. It's getting to know the people in your neighborhood, in your town. Volunteering at the homeless shelters, at the soup kitchens. Organizing blood drives. Organizing events for children. Cleaning up, etc. That's what that means. No one's doing that anymore. Because everyone's just focused on themselves and they're leaving. So I agree somewhat. And it's not surprising to me. The other one is money. Money is going up. Money is money, money, money. It's always important. And that's another reason, I guess, why these other ones are saying, you know, I don't have time for the for money. I don't have time for religion. I don't have time to have children. It's too expensive to raise children. Look at the cost of real estate. I mean, I mean I'm sure you can tell me all about how much how much it's expensive to rent an apartment nowadays. Oh, jeez, I don't even want to talk about that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. God no, damn. It's ridiculous. You would... think about places. No, think of it. Now, of course, it's important. I need money to live. I don't. I can't. I can't go involve my community. I have to get another job, or I have to look for a better job, or I have to do something on the side like Uber Eats or whatever. I don't have time in raising children. though, that takes time and money. And then if I have a child, let's just say it's a boy, he's gonna be a girl by the time he's twelve. He's gonna be a girl by the time he's twelve at this point, because in t- in twelve years it's gonna be normal. No one's gonna say anything because guess what? I can't say anything. Because if I keep saying stuff that I don't like transgenderism. What's going to happen? And look at the, and there's another, and there's more polls, by the way, if you go down on this article. Look at that, people. Uh, it talks about transgenderism and LGBTQ. Look at this. 15% of Democrats are accepting of people who are transgender. 47. Wait, wait let, me, let me read this right. So it's yeah, 47. Has Please. our society gone too far, not far enough, or is it about right? So the percentage of people who say too far, too far in accepting people who are transgender. 15% say we have gone too far accepting people who are transgender. It's 47% of independents. It's a key number right there. Mm-hmm. Say we've gone too far. 75% of Republicans say we've gone too far. Do you think they want to take their kids to school anymore? Are they going to have more kids? So, so, it's, so it seems like parents are... Maybe just afraid of having kids or seeing what's happening well, in schools. Well, it's not parents. It's people. It's people. Single kids. It's, not only is it difficult to start a family nowadays, because if, you, God forbid, you're dating and you get accused of sexual assault or rape by somebody, then if you do manage to get that far, you want to get a place and live together? You can't. It's expensive. It's too expensive to live somewhere with somebody you want to be with. Too expensive. And then the schools are indoctrinating your children. It's too expensive to take them to a private school. You may not have a charter school in your area, and if you do, you may not like it. Then what are you going to do? Well, you're just going to keep getting money. You're going to say, you know what, I'll hold that off. Look at all the people who are holding off having children until they're 35. There are people in our, there are people in our society, our age, who literally just say, we have friends. How many friends do we not have that say, oh, I'm not going to have kids? Oh, I don't want kids. I don't want that. It's too much work. Right. <laughs> they get a dog or a cat instead, and they say, you know what? I'm going to travel. I'm going to travel. They, they, they don't look at the at the long term. They just look at the short term. What, what will faith. make them happy? They don't have faith of any kind. They don't have faith in the community. They don't have faith in their country. They don't have faith in, in a higher power. They don't view that. And, and I never liked it because you don't think that uh, your grandparents, your great-grandparents would have wanted to travel and have fun. They live through harsh times. You know, I'm not from here. Our parents aren't from this country, but they immigrated here in the... Well, mine's been in the late 80s and early 90s. They weren't here during the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. But all the folks that who had parents that were here, uh, they, they see their great-great-granddaughter pretty much saying, oh, I'm going to be on OnlyFans, and I'm just going to make money, and I'm going to hustle. Hustle to them means they're going to work at Target. They're not hustling. You have a job, lady. But that's what, they, that's what their attitude is. They say, well, I'm going to have fun. I'm not going to, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice. Sacrifice? For what? I'm going to have fun. Who, you, who can you blame for that? Well, of course you can blame the obvious. It's a feminist movement. The feminist movement pretty much said that you're going to work. You're going to be at home and you're going to miss out while your husband's out there working because that's fun, apparently. To them, they see that as fun. They see that as Yeah. Fun. What? Whoever uh... told you we like to go to work? We don't like to go to work. We have to go to work. That's what it is. It's our job. That's the job. It's That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, then you have to go out and get out there. Don't let a man tell you what to do. And so now men are reacting and saying, 
well, there's no women out there, so I just got to keep making money. Having children with who? There's no one out there for me. And so you create these two sets of of of, of, of bad of bad cultures where men are pretty much saying, you know what, it's out there for me. I can just I can just go out there and have fun. There are women out there who just want to have fun. And if I have a lot of money and I save up and I work hard and I just want to have a lot of money, because that's important according to almost 90% of this poll, then I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go out there and have fun with all these women and these women, all they care about is guys with money and having fun. No one cares about working hard. Nobody's thinking about having kids. The country, forget the country. It's all about me. Yeah, I, I think... Is going to take over the world? Forget it. Who cares? This country's evil anyways. Look at it. They have all these wars. It's too expensive. They do things wrong. They're turning guys into girls and girls into, into guys. Why do... What's, what's up? What are we doing with this? We forgot the values that brought us here. We have an entire generation that went to war in World War II. A great war. He bequeathed us a, a nation that was worthy, that was powerful, that was wealthy, prosperous. Look at what we've done to it. Look where we are. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, I, I think I think another big factor is probably the amount of uh, people, especially young kids these days, they're worrying about having the luxury. Like like when you when you look at the data with money, in nineteen ninety eight, it's seven percent of people says not that important. But if you look at it now. 43% of people think it's very important. But I think also another key factor is because everything is so expensive these days. But you also have the amount of young kids or, you know, the older guys or girls, whatever. Um, they just, all they worry about is probably just a lifestyle. And sometimes I think we probably, that's why we need Andrew Tate. <laughs> but, oh, have you, have you heard about um, his release? Uh, I did, I did. Yeah, I think it was a couple days ago. Yeah, they're on house arrest now. Yeah, they were released uh, early from prison, and now they're on uh, house arrest. And there are a bunch of videos. They they look shot up, man. They look like they've been through hell. Well, uh, well, Tristan looks like he's been uh, he's been working out hard. I saw Andrew looks kind of flabby. Tristan looks Indian now. Oh, <laughs> with that beard, <laughs> that beard and that mustache. <laughs> but I was looking at the video, and he was, and Tristan was coming out. He looked so confused. He was looking at everyone all happy but confused at the same time. And then Andrew behind Tristan just looked so angry, looking at everyone like, "Look what you guys did, man!" I'm gonna, well, I'm sure I'm it's gonna come back. I'm sure it's at the side. I'm sure they plan yeah. how they're gonna look. It's always like that. Every no, other... it's it's a, it's a character. It's, yeah, it's, it's a character. A but I, I'm. Honestly, uh, from my view, I'm 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 happy they're back. Uh, I don't agree with some of the things that they say. Uh, I've mentioned this on the Patreon. Uh, I I probably say I agree with seventy percent of what they say about how men need to be men and how women need to be men. And, uh, a woman should be a, a woman. It shouldn't be the other way around. Right. And how men need to take more responsibility. Stop stop being weak. Stop jerking off, watching porn, and you know, stop playing a lot of video games. And then when it comes to women, you know, stop trying to do what a man, you know, do or like like hustle, advice. make money, and not not have a family. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm happy that they're back, and hopefully, you know, um, the charges are well, cleared up. Well, we'll probably out. discuss this further on the on our Patreon episode, and I, I, we're going to continue talking about the values uh, that we need in America on the Patreon. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, I think that should be it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you guys check up on our YouTube channel, uh, our Patreon, patreon.com slash four, the number four, Republic. Uh, we're also on Spotify. Uh, we're also on Deezer. Um, we're also on uh, Pandora as well. Pandora, iHeartRadio. Uh, I think we'll also get up on uh, TuneUp as well. Yeah, we're everywhere you can get your podcast. Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, these are we're on Patreon. Our free episodes are also on Patreon, by the way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We're, we're going to do whatever we can to uh, take over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, see you guys next time. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.